a special appetizer tonight called a Vitello Tonado. It's a veal with tuna sauce. It's a very um, delicious, uh, sort of salty, vinegary flavor that uh, is just amazing. Um, and to start that, I had to go get today some um, very special veal. Um, so what we have here is a veal eye round, is what we call it. Um, you also could use uh, top loin, um, which is pretty hard to find and pretty expensive. The eye round still works very well. You don't have as large slices uh, when you're all done, but uh, it will still uh, look great, taste great at the end of the day. Um, the first step that we need to do is to take our pork and season it with salt and pepper on both sides. Rub it in a little bit to make sure it stays. Now we're going to move over to our stove. I have here a Dutch oven um, that I'm heating at uh, medium high. You want to get it good and hot and you want to add about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. And what we want to do is we want to brown the veal on both sides. Over here on my cutting board, I've uh, collected uh, the rest of the things that we all need for the recipe. Um, so I have a medium-sized carrot cut in half vertically. I um, have a half an onion. I have some fresh thyme from my garden, a bunch of sprigs of thyme. I have also some fresh sage from the garden. You need about two sprigs. Um, I have also here um, a bunch of peppercorns, I would say probably five to six peppercorns, and also uh, cloves. So those are whole cloves that are going to go in, about four or five of those. Um, I also have bay leaf and some garlic, and that's all going to go into the pot in a few minutes after the veal is done browning. So now you can see I've uh, browned my veal on all sides. And what you want to do now is take that and remove it to the plate. And I'm going to return the pan down to medium because it's pretty darn hot right now. And I'm going to add back uh, my ingredients that we just showed you, the onion. A pair of pieces our thyme, our dried bay leaf, we have two cloves of garlic going in there, fresh sage, also want to add your black peppercorns in there. And you want to stir this a little bit, sort of keep it moving around in there, about eight, about eight minutes, about eight to ten minutes. We want to see if we can soften the onion up a little bit, soften the carrot up a little bit. Um, all those things are going to ultimately uh, boil, so you don't have to be completely soft, but you want to get the, the flavors in there, and releasing all the flavors, releasing from the various herbs. Now this has been cooking for a few minutes. I'm also going to add my celery back in here and uh, let that cook with the other things for about three minutes more. Again, we're just trying to release some of the flavors. Get some of the things to cook with as much, with as much of the flavor as you can. Now that my 
vegetables and herbs have had a few minutes in there. I'm going to now add a cup of dry white wine and to glaze the pan. And you want to reduce that wine by about half. That'll probably take only two or three minutes with the pan this hot. Okay, I've let my wine now reduce by about half. And now it's time to add your three cups of water. Now what you want to do is push your vegetables aside just a little bit and get your veal and put it into the broth. And I'm going to cover this and I'm going to simmer it for about 35 minutes or until uh, an insta-read thermometer uh, reads about 135 degrees in the middle. Um, so uh, if you don't have a thermometer, you can probably do it a little bit by pushing on the meat. If it's got some spring back to it, it's probably finished. Now while our uh, veal is uh, simmering in the uh, pot, um, we're going to make the uh, sauce that goes on top of it, which is basically a, a tuna mayonnaise really in effect. So I have my food processor out here. And uh, to that, I'm going to add three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. And uh, also going to put, I have here about a quarter cup of packed parsley. And I want to put about half of the parsley. I want to save some of it for garnishing. So I'm going to take about half the parsley and put it into my food processor for the mayonnaise. And then I have here a third of a cup of capers. That should be about a jar of capers in all in all. Um, you're going to take about half of these and put them into the food processor. You're going to save the other half for uh, topping the dish when it's all done. We also need, I have here uh, fresh anchovies. And we want to take about four of these anchovy fillets and stick them in here. And that's going to give it that really salty, zesty flavor. In addition to that, we're going to add a can of tuna packed in olive oil. This is um, a good one here that I like. And we're just going to pull the tuna fish right out of there into the food processor. We also need about a tablespoon of lemon juice, excuse me, of lemon zest. So I have my handy dandy uh, zester here. And I'm probably gonna end up putting, I would say a good part of the lemon in here. It usually works out to about a tablespoon when you do it. And then what we also will do after is we will save um, the lemon that you're zesting here and we're going to cut some um, slices to use as a garnish on top. I'm also going to add a little fresh salt into the bowl, not a lot because obviously all the ingredients that are in here is already quite salty and we can always uh, taste it after and adjust a little more seasoning. I'm also going to put some fresh ground pepper. We'll put some more on top. so. You'll have a chance to season some more if you like pepper like me. And then finally, I have four eggs separated, four egg yolks that are going in here. And we wanna go ahead and blend this for a couple of minutes. Now 
now we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn the machine on and add back olive oil until we get an emulsion. So we turn it into a sort of mayonnaise. I'm going to use um, Casas de Hualdo, um Spanish olive oil. This is a single varietal um, Cornicabra olive, which is uh, quite robust. So we'll give it a nice olivey flavor. to uh, put my spoon in it and just sort of see what it looks like from a consistency point of view. It looks nice, looks like a mayonnaise. Give it a little tasting, see if it needs any salt or pepper. Uh, I think it's ready for serving. Okay, it's been 35 minutes and it's time to check our veal and see what temperature we're at. I have my InstaRead thermometer here. And we're gonna put it into the thickest part of breast. Ah, it's very well done. So time for it to come out. So I've retrieved the veal from the pot. Um, in addition to that, you also want to pull the carrot and celery that was simmering in the pot with the veal. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take it and cut it into julienne strips and use that as a garnish. Now to uh, plate the dish, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of the pork that's now cooled down a little bit, and I'm going to get my uh, what we call Granton Edge Slicer. You'll see that this slicer's got indents in it, so um, that helps keep the uh, thin slices from sticking to your knife as you're cutting. So you want to take this and do nice thin slices. You also, if you have a... Uh, a slicer yourself, an electric slicer, you can use that as well, but uh, no problem just cutting this nice and thin, as thin as you can by hand. Now we're going to take the pork slices and arrange them nicely on the plate. What I'm trying to do is pretty much cover the entire surface of the plate, like so. Then we're going to take our tuna sauce that we made. And drizzle it over the top of the pork. Feel free to put plenty of this on there because this stuff is really, really good. That's what makes the dish. Everyone's going to want extra. And then we want to top it with a little fresh parsley. Then we have the julienne strips of carrot and celery that we've taken out of the stock that the veal was cooked in. I'm going to garnish with a piece of lemon on the side. And finally, most important, we're going to have some of the capers drizzled over the top so people can have a bite of caper with their pork. And I'm going to top with these beautiful caper berries, which are beautifully, ta so tasty. And that's it. It's ready to serve as an appetizer.